and press. My name is Emily Eggenberger. I work as State Representative Whitsett's Legislative Director, and it is my privilege to welcome you to Representative Whitsett's Clean Water, Clean Air press conference. I want to thank everyone for joining us today as we officially get this monumental legislation off the ground. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce State Representative Karen Whitsett. Rep Whitsett has served her community for decades and has served as your representative in Lansing for, since 2019. She's a member of three important House committees of the Detroit Caucus, the Legislative Black Caucus, and the Labor Caucus. Here to speak to her bill, State Representative Karen Whitsett. I want to take this time to say good morning and thank you so much for everyone being here. My name is Karen Whitsett and I am represent the House District 9 that is Detroit and Dearborn. We are residents of this community and we deserve clean water and clean air. This is why we're here today because it's our time to be heard. I want to take the time to thank a few people who have worked grassroots efforts on this for far too long. Ms. Fridia Butler, Reverend Cynthia Lowe, and there are countless others that I can't mention on this list right now because it's far too long. Day, day in and day out, District 9 residents are surrounded by junkyards, car repair shops, used car lots. They're pretending to be legitimate businesses when they definitely aren't. More than 45 of them are located within a square mile radius. This is far too many. They're destroying our environment, threatening our quality of life, and affecting our mental health. These companies are burning cars, crushing cars, dumping oil into our waterways and sewage systems, and contaminating our soil as well. All of this is affecting our air quality. All in inches away from our homes. I said inches away from our homes. It's affecting our parks, playgrounds, our schools. This is where our precious children play. They deserve to have an area that is free of risk, harm, of being contaminated of their water and their soil. These people are scamming our, our Detroiters. They're hardworking Detroiters. And they're giving us disruptive noise within our community. We deserve better. The current fine for these infractions is a mere $2,500. That's just pocket change to them. They're back open within hours. My bill will increase those fines from $2,500 to $25,000 and $50,000 per day that they're not in compliance. This bill will also change this from a misdemeanor to a felony, which could possibly be a year in jail. This has to stop. Our community deserves better. I am currently working with the mayor, law enforcement, and our environmental groups. They are hard at work to ensure that we have clean water and clean air. This is what we must do for Detroit, for Dearborn. With our environment, we deserve to thrive in, not just survive in. At this moment, I'd like to take the time and introduce our mayor, Mayor Mike Duggan. Well, I want to thank Representative Whitsett for her leadership, and uh, she's not new to this issue. When I met Karen Whitsett, she was the block club president who was going up and down the streets making her neighborhood better. She's taken that neighborhood advocacy to Lansing, uh, and she's being supported by a number of other elected officials here who also started out as neighborhood advocates uh, and were really... Uh, extremely well represented in Lansing and at the Wayne County Commission as you're going to hear from. What has happened in the city is as people moved out large stretches of vacant land uh, uh, emerged, we all know that. One of the primary buyers of those lands over the last 20 or 30 years have been people who run scrap yards, junk car lots, used car lots, etc. There are more than 300 in the city of Detroit. Uh, and as the representative said, this is the most concentrated area, although there's a group in southwest Detroit that would argue that they're pretty close uh, to this kind of situation. So more than two years ago, I issued an executive 
order where I put a moratorium that no more scrapyards, junkyards, used car lots would be permitted in the city. So for the last two years, we haven't had any be added. That's progress. Then the, the Department of uh, Building Safety and Engineering went out in an aggressive enforcement action and has gone out ticketing. We've had a number that we have shut down. We've also had dozens who brought their yards into compliance. They don't have the cars stacked up out on the streets. They're not improperly uh, uh, conducting business environmentally. Uh, they are doing what they're supposed to do. And for those businesses that are following the law, they're in compliance, they don't have anything to be concerned about from Representative Whitsett's bill. Uh, but for those who continue to cut corners, uh, who think that breaking the law uh, is just the cost of uh, doing business, uh, the representative is going to make that cost quite a bit uh, more expensive. And so uh, we are right now hiring a group of inspectors. We are, the city of Detroit this year will double the number of inspectors out inspecting these scrapyards. And if they're armed with this legislation, they're going to be that much more effective. This is something where the community is coming together saying, you want to run a business in Detroit, uh, you have to follow the rules. You have to be a good neighbor. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to somebody who's been an advocate for this neighborhood uh, for as long as I can remember and is now the chair of the Wayne County Commission. Please welcome Alicia Bell. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, Representative Winsett, for this important bill. I am Wayne County Commissioner Alicia Bell and honored to be here to speak on this very important issue. It is very unfortunate that Wayne County ranks 83 out of 83 counties in Michigan in, count, in county health initiatives. That means that we have the worst health outcomes in the state of Michigan. A contributing factor to that is the environment and in the families that live in this environment from lead in our homes, to diminished air quality, to the abundance of used car lots in a concentrated area such as this. These environmental factors are causing havoc in our communities and have devastating effects on the health of our families and our children. Individually and as a group, commissioners have approved several actions throughout the county to eliminate illegal waste dumping in Detroit and in our neighborhoods and to keep neighborhoods safe, clean, and make sure that our children are healthy. This bill represents a continuation of those efforts to extend the efforts of upgrading penalties, upgrading those penalties to these junkyards and to these used car lots. So I am just grateful and thankful to our representative and for gathering all of the community members here today because we know that this is a very serious issue and it takes a community to make sure that we pass bills in Lansing and in Wayne County and in the city to make sure that these junk cars here is loud and clear that we are not gonna take it anymore. The health of our children is at stake. So I am so proud to be here today and it's my privilege to introduce Senator Marshall Bullock to give a few words at this time. Thank you. Well, greetings. Uh, as you said, my name is Marshall Bullock. I am senator for the 4th District, but I used to be the district manager here in the 7th District. And so in my previous role as that district manager in the city of Detroit Department of Neighborhoods, I am very well aware of this issue, the dumping and fighting abandoned homes in the community. But this is one of those issues that had some specific nuances. But when my friend and colleague Karen Witsack came and said she wanted to do something to uh, address the auto shops, the chop shops, the body shops, the illegal operations in the neighborhoods. I was jumped on board quickly because I know how this impacts our health and impacts the community and all the things that go along with that. And so it's a struggle to get those folks to adhere to the administration and the ordinances and the, uh, the uh, restrictions that we want to put on. But there are some good members, but we want them all to be good partners in the neighborhood. So this legislation is intended to address just that, minimize blight and the unintended consequences uh, of the chemical runoff and the health hazards from the aerosol sprays. So with that, I just want to 
in the spirit of fighting blight, support Representative Karen Whitsett in this proposed legislation, and we all join in her in her quest to do so. And next up is Veronica. Uh, I'm said. I'm sorry. I'm, I know I, it's been a while. How you doing? Hello. Thank you. Uh, as one of the community leaders in District Seven. Uh, I want to thank Karen for spearheading this, this bill. This is overdue and well needed. Uh, as a radio patrol president, my radio patrol has gone through and through the neighborhood and have seen different uh, lots being used for the same purpose uh, illegally. And we have reported this and we have gotten some things taken care of. We got some things uh, shut down. But as Karen has said, they pop right back up again. So I want to thank her for bringing this out and spearheading this to make sure that we do shut this down for the betterment of our community, for the betterment of our children, for uh, our neighborhoods. So right now I would like to introduce Reverend uh, Cynthia Lowe. Good morning. Let me share something with you. I was born in Detroit. I went to Detroit Public Schools. I graduated from Wayne State. I bought a house right down there on Shirley in 1979. I have been a black club president for 38 years. I am committed to this community. And I want to thank Representative Whitsett for her bill. This is not new. Our, we have been fighting for five years over here to close a lot of these businesses down. They are destroying our community. The whole city is being built up. The city is a wonderful place to live now. But when you come over here, oh, go down Plymouth. Almost every block has a car-related business. I go down to the border zoning appeals. We are fight. People want to know, well, what are the people in the community doing? What have they done? How did they get in this condition? What were they doing? We were fighting. It's like whack-a-mole. Every time you shut one down, three more open. And this is the problem that we're having. The laws need to be stronger. Uh, we go down there, like the place down on Plymouth and Shirley. I went down there at the Border Zone in the Pills. They closed it down. They opened up, they changed the name and, and opened up the next day. We find that happens to us. I don't understand what's happening here where you can be told by a government organization that you cannot open up your, your business and you open up the next day. Do you know how disrespectful that is to this community? How disrespectful that is to our elected officials? These people don't live in Detroit, most of them. And now we have another horrific problem coming up. I'm gonna make it short. We have another horrific problem coming up. What they do now is most of these people will have an African-American person working for them. Most of them are at will, they don't pay taxes. I don't see where the car repair places pay taxes either, but they'll have an African-American person working for them. They'll tell that person to buy the lot on this street. The land bank will sell you the lot across the street or next door. So they bring all these raggedy cars home and they work on them at home. Now you have senior citizens or people who are renting who are elderly, who are sick and they can't protect themselves. Now they've got the junkyard, not only on the corners polluting, they've got the junkyard next door. And if you don't believe me, go right down the street to Shirley. Shirley and uh, the Thornton Street. Go right down here to Shirley and turn down the street. On my street, you will see at the corner, 13800, a man has a truck. He's been ticketed several times. They don't care about the tickets. This is what I, why we need so much help. These people don't care about the tickets. They just ignore them. Uh, in Detroit here, we, majority of people here, have to follow the law. There was a person who opened up a drug house on my street. He hired, he hired uh, people in the community too, and he sold drugs. It took me two years to shut him down because he had a lot of support from his relatives on the street. But I got to shut him down. I can go down the border zoning appeals and fight these illegal car places. They will be told to shut down. They don't shut down. I, I know a lot of people have to speak, and I thank you for letting me have my say, and many blessings to you. <laughs>
thank you again for your words of encouragement and what the fight is all about and reiterating that is extremely important, Reverend Lowe. I definitely thank you and all those that are here supporting this, this bill, because it's definitely an important piece of legislation that we definitely need to see all the way over to the finish line. Now I would like to take the time to introduce Mr. William Dickerson. I'm here on behalf of our Pride Area Community Council because most of this activities of these activities is going on in our community. And we have been fighting for years as uh, they say that we've been going to zone and appeal board. They say we are going to check into it, but checking into it is not enough. We want you to do something about it after you check into it. And I have some pictures here. If anybody want to see them, this place should have been shut down two years ago. They say it's shut down, but it's not shut down. And I have the proof in my hand to tell you and show you and take you to where it's at. Okay. And we're tired of saying we're doing business in your neighborhood, but when you buy something, you can't take it back if it don't fit or you can't use it for exchange. And then half the people want to curse you out for coming into their business. We don't need this in our neighborhood. Thank you. Good morning. I'm State Representative Tanisha Yancey from House District 1. I'm also the Detroit Caucus Chair. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I would like to field questions from the media. Ms. Lowe. Ms. Lowe? Ms. Lowe? Come on up. You said you've been fighting for five years. Yes, What's I have. been happening in between those? In well, between in the five years I've been fighting, I constantly fight. <laughs> In the five years that I've been fighting, don't think we've been sitting still. We've been down to the planning uh, department, board of zoning appeals, Gate Leland, we talked to Mona, the city's lawyer, Arthur Edge, other city inspectors, CDAD, community development advocates, Detroit Police Department, we reported them to them, uh, numerous black clubs. Uh, Ms. Alicia Bell, she came to a meeting with us. Senator Sylvia Santana came to a meeting. Uh, Judge Craig Strong, we have wrote letters, we've got petitions, we've done it all. You see, we still have 70. Now, right down there on Shirley and Plymouth, it was five star. I went down there and said we had enough businesses, and they did tell them they could not open. If you go down there, you see cars, usually they're open. They changed it to O2, I O2. They're operating. In the five years, we've done all of this. I've got emails, a ton of them. We've been fighting for the last five years, but we need some help from the state and federal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions for media? I see one in the back. Representative Whitsack. I will not speak to the legality of a business um, if it is or is not. What I will speak to is the fact that we're here for clean water and clean air. That's what we're here for. This is just an example of what we're up against and why we have the mayor, Alicia Bell, the Wayne County Commissioner, Senator Bullock, Senator Tanisha Yance, Wayne, I'm sorry, Representative Tanisha Yance, speaking it into existence. Speaking it into existence. But that's why we have everyone here to let you know we are fighting for this. We care. The mayor cares about this issue, and that's extremely important for you to know. Is, there, is that another question? I'm sorry, is that another question for the mayor? So, so we have more than 300 scrap yards, auto repair yards, junk car lots in the city. I have a master spreadsheet, and the Building Safety and Engineering Department has been systematically going through and inspecting. Now, the inspectors, unfortunately, for a year could not go out, and they are out now, 
And as I said, I've authorized them to double the number of inspectors. Uh, and, and a lot, we've shut down several, uh, but we haven't dented the problem. So the first thing that we did was put in a moratorium so they haven't been expanding. If anybody opened in the last two years, that is illegal and we can shut it down. Um, but we need to do two things. We need to be more aggressive. Uh, as soon as I leave here, I'm going to 13800 Shirley to see it myself, and then I'm going to call the Building Safety Department and see what we've been doing about it. But the second thing is we need stronger penalties, uh, and, and what Representative Whitsett is doing is the right thing. If we intensify the inspections and increase the penalties at the same time, uh, we can make a major difference. And, folks, I mean, just look at this. As you go down, and we've got several other areas on this area of the west side and southwest Detroit uh, where the neighborhoods are coming back fine and you get to the main street uh, and everything. Go check East 7 Mile. Uh, and, and what you see is one scrap yard, one auto junkyard after another. If they're operating legally, that's fine. Lots of people cutting corners. Uh, and I think if we can get this bill through, uh, there'll be a lot fewer people cutting corners. I'm sorry, at this time, we're only taking questions from the media, and as soon as we wrap up, we'll take questions from the community as well. Any? Can I ask another one? You have one more. Well, we've been talking about uh, junkyards, but where, what does that have to do with the clean water, clean air? I didn't hear it. Karen, what's that, please? It's a um, I honestly can't see how you can't see how this is connected together. All you have to do is take a look at one. It's contaminating the oil. Our oil is contaminating our, our ground, going into our sewage system illegally. This is not where oil is supposed to go. They are crushing cars. This is the decibel level that is high within our community. This shouldn't be this way. This is also the burning of cars, painting cars. Let me be clear. Let me be clear on this. We have worked together, all the community groups, the city offices, the mayor, the law enforcement, the environmental groups, we have worked on this. But there are not enough people, which is why the mayor is adding on more people to do inspections. But like he said, we're behind the eight ball when it comes to a year. Do you know how many have gotten thrown up in a year? We have one right on Schaefer and Fullerton. Have just decided to throw one up there. You can drive by there and you'll see the metal gates all around it, and that's what they do. They throw up these walls, so you can't see in there and see what they're doing. But you can dog on there, smell it, and you can definitely hear it. So that's how it's tied together. This is why we're working with the environmentalists, but all this takes is definitely common sense. And also, the, um, have you driven through Southfield, Novi, West Bloomfield? Have you seen this? No, no. Only in our area, because we are dis we're disposable. Not anymore. I'm going to take one more question from you um, here over to my left, and we will conclude questions for now. That does not mean that uh, the community will not be able to get their questions answered, but th at this time, we're going to just take one more question from the media, and then we'll, we'll cl close out the press conference and answer any further questions. Twenty-five thousand is the initial fee that uh, for the violation. Fifty thousand dollars per day that they stay within that being um, not in compliance. We have it in excess. It's in excess for a reason. We want them gone, plain and simple. The bad actors, we want them gone. We're not talking about the ones that are um, adhering to the law, doing what they're supposed to do, actually contributing to the community, because there are those. This is not what we're here today to talk about. I would also like to bring up Representative Ayash, and I would like for him to speak to the PFAS, because you asked about testing, and I want to make sure that's addressed. So this is for you at WWJ. I think what, what, you, what you have to realize are a, a couple things. So m some scrapyard metal sites actually have to go through and get permits from MD Eagle, and it's because a lot of chemicals 
like Rep Woods had mentioned, when you're crushing vehicles with rubber tires and paint and things of that nature and, and car materials, car seats that have scotch right and things of that sort, you have a lot of chemicals that are involved with uh, some of those uh, vehicles when they're being disposed of and crushed, and they're not being regulated, which is why I know Rep Whitsett and everyone here, at least in, in the House, uh, co-sponsored the Protecting Overburdened Communities Act earlier this year that would set guidelines with MD Eagle, the Department of uh, Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, for some of these standards. Now, when uh, in I believe it was 2018, there's a, a, a scrapyard site right off of Mount Elliott, east uh, of, of 94. And what you'll find is sometimes this stuff is flammable. And there was a fire a couple years ago that happened because, to Rep Whitsett's point, there's still oil in, in these vehicles, there's still gasoline sometimes. And when there is an implosion of, of this metal, I mean, this is pollution that is coming into our communities, into our neighborhoods. So make no mistake, there's absolutely an environmental hazard when you're seeing some of this stuff leak, when you're having these cars just sit there, especially after they've been crushed, you're seeing, uh, you know, pieces of metal uh, go out as into into the air particles. So there is definitely a, an environmental justice concern, and it is causing pollution and it is causing detriment to uh, people's health as well. No, so so let me. Let me give you a quick example of how licensing doesn't necessarily mean that it makes a lot of sense. Actually, let me, let me answer that. Let me, let me answer that question for you. Just because someone has obtained a license doesn't mean that's what they're licensed for. They're not following the law. That is the bottom line. Once again, that is why we are here. There is only so much the city can do. That is when the state steps in. That's why I'm here. Thank you. That concludes the questions for the media. I would like to invite Emily back to the mic to close us out. On behalf of Representative Whitsett, thank you to all our elected officials, to our community leaders, to our neighbors, and to our friends for joining us today. Though they could not be present at today's event, I can't conclude today's press conference without also extending a huge thank you to the multiple environmental groups in the state, such as the Michigan League of Conservation Voters and the Michigan Environmental Council, that have also given us their full support of this bill. We are thankful to have them by our side as we work to get this legislation through. We are thankful, we are so sincerely thankful to those who have made the effort to be here today to those who are offering guidance throughout the process, and to those who have offered their support in spirit. Thank you again for coming, everyone, and enjoy your Friday.